All right, welcome again, everyone, to this Friday night Bible study where we'll be studying in First Chronicles, the twenty-first chapter. Very interesting chapter, um, and we'll be learning a lot. There's a lot in there, so uh, we thank God for you. Thank God for your participation in our Bible studies uh, during the week um, and connecting with us and share with others about our Bible studies and things that we're doing and so that they can also either grow or learn or comment or what have you, agree or disagree. And we're not going to always agree on everything, but I agree to disagree. And you ought to agree to disagree if that's the way you feel. Uh, I will uh, bring scripture and then you can bring what scriptures you might have and we can, uh, we can discuss it at some point in time. We also uh, thank God for um, our website, which is www.cdcsr.org, where you connect to a lot of what we're doing or uh, you can reach us by phone. Area code 707-546-0744. You can reach us by email, cbc1620 at att.net. That's CBC, as in uh, uh, big BC, CBC, 1620 at att.net. Uh, or our address here is 1620 Sonoma Avenue, Santa Rosa, California. 95405 or our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 4317, Santa Rosa, California, 95402. We also have our Facebook page, which is Community Baptist Church of Santa Rosa, which all of our video videos are uploaded to the Facebook, and our YouTube channel, which is CBC 1620 Live, and that's a capital C, capital B, capital C, 1620, and live is lowercase. And so uh, make sure you uh, click the subscribe button and you'll get uh, notified when there are new videos uploaded. So we upload uh, sometimes and uh, we Zoom uh, on Wednesday night. is our Wednesday night uh, women's Bible study, Coffee with Christ. That's Zoom Live Tuesday, excuse me, did I say Wednesday? Tuesday, Tuesday at 6.30. Uh, come and join our women. Uh, gather together and, and, and talk about the Word of God and talk about other things in your life that pertain to your walk with the Lord. It's good to have others who can agree with each other. And there's a good Bible study also. That's Maria Dwyer who heads that up. And then our Wednesday Noonday Bible Study uh, with Brother Jim Kennedy. Uh, it's uploaded on YouTube. Um, and there's a material uh, shared on screen. He started a new six-week series, Living with Hope in a Broken World. And so um, next week it'll be the expression of our hope. I believe we just went through the basis for our hope, so the expression of our hope. And then Wednesday night, Bible study, Facebook Live, like tonight, we're going through the book of Revelation, what a powerful, powerful book that is. We're coming out of a lot of the uh, battle portion, and it's getting to the victory part, the good parts are really about to kick in. Um, and so uh, you want to be there for that. That's at 6.30 on Wednesdays. And then we have our children's Bible study, which is pre-recorded. In other words, it's uploaded to our YouTube channel. For our children, that's Sister Genevieve McDowell, who does a great job on that. And we want to certainly uh, be there for that one. Also Thursday, our special needs Bible study, pre-recorded, uploaded to our YouTube uh, channel. It's done by Sister Maria Dwyer. And then also uh, materials are shared on screen so that you can follow along. Thursday, uh, our choir Bible study with Reverend Kenny Parker. 
uh, pre-recorded, uploaded to our YouTube channel. And then again, another lesson page is shared on screen so you can follow along. Friday, tonight, Bible study, Facebook Live. We're doing 1 Chronicles chapter 21. So get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Saturday, we have at 2 p.m., we have a basic biblical orientation. And you can't ever get too far away from the basics. Remember the basics. So always go back through the basics. Always go back. And it's a reminder for some and a growth for others. Uh, we want you to get involved with that. We call it our boot camp or our new members orientation, but mainly basic biblical orientation is what we want. And then that's a, a meeting, is a, a Zoom live meeting we do on Saturdays at 2 p.m. And so uh, you can upload uh, the link uh, from, face, from our Facebook page, and uh, then, uh, which is upload our YouTube also. Saturday evening, sweet hour of prayer, five o'clock to six. Come on out and join us in prayer and just take the time and let's unify together in the word of God and prayer. And so that's 5 p.m. on Saturday, 9 a.m. Sunday morning. Uh, we're continuing through the book of Romans. What another great book, uh, Paul's book of Romans we have. And then we have our church service at 10 a.m., uh, which is Facebook Live. Um, and then we have our toddler's church, which is pre-recorded. And it's posted, it'll be posted on our YouTube channel uh, after church service. So those are our announcements. And then we want to thank God who, for those who continue to give to the cause of Christ and the expansion of the kingdom, the kingdom of God through your sacrificial giving, your offering, your tithe. Uh, and so we thank God for you and for that. There's ways of doing it. You can mail it in. We give you your mail address. Or you can do it through our website, PayPal, secured. Uh, giving on our PayPal. So that's just another way. And so we thank God for those who continue to tithe unto the Lord as we go through this pandemic period. Um, we're, we're still in a holding pattern. I know I've just got word that there are people who will be going to church Sunday, but uh, I'm not sure that we're ready for that just yet. Uh, we're we will be prepared when we do. We want to have masks for you. We want to be able to have to practice social distancing. And we expect you to uh, just come and, and, and go and, and not really hang around. So when we get to that point, uh, we're going to slowly ease back in so that uh, we can uh, you know, be um, cognizant of the time we're in. And so we thank God for you. And continue to pray as we go into our prayer. Continue to pray for our nation. Pray for our, uh, those law enforcement uh, officers who don't uh, agree with um, the things that are happening. And I pray for those who are out there uh, marching against these things. Not those who are doing violence, but those who are marching and and uh, thank God for those who are progressing and the leadership that it's going to take to move further down the line. And so pray for us as we continue to do those things. Um, you know, I thank God for you put on my heart to think about our children and our grandchildren and those who come behind us, our young folk who need our wisdom and our understanding the same time there they don't want to go through what we went through and they shouldn't have to so we want to keep them in prayer and pray for um, all of those things so um, sister Maria Dwyer is going to give us scripture and Jim Kennedy is going to open us in prayer hello everyone welcome I'm going to be reading Psalm 139 verses 1 through 16. So Psalm 139, 1 through 16. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. 
Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where could I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I like this photo with the Colossians prayer. First Colossians 9 through 14. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good works and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might according to the glorious power, unto all patient and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father who has made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, yes. even the forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for being our God. We come today to the uh, Lord seeking your wisdom and your knowledge as we study your word today, Lord. We pray, Lord, for all that is out there, Lord, that are grieving, going through difficult situations, Lord. This country is really in turmoil. We need your help, Lord. And, and uh, just guide us and direct us, Lord, in, in every situation, every thing. Let us be aware of other people's feelings, Lord, as we walk through this uh, journey, this day, throughout this week. And uh, we, uh, Lord, uh, just uh, we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And, uh, let the Lord guide you and direct you in the way you should go. We thank you for our church family, Lord. We thank you for your pastor. Uh, give him the word from on high, Lord, as we study your word today, Lord. Lord, we pray for Julia and her family and mine and family. And we pray for all those out there, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you keep safe, Lord, keep praying. And Lord, uh, make a difference. Uh, each of us can make a difference one by one, Lord. And trust in the Lord. We thank you and we praise you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So. Here we are looking at chapter 21 in 1 Chronicles. Uh, some very interesting things that took place in this chapter. Uh, and it starts out very interesting. Not new, but interesting. And, uh, in this particular chapter it says, And Satan stood up against Israel and provoke David to number Israel. So we can see here again, uh, David was influenced by Satan. Because it says he was moved to and provoke David to number Israel. He wanted to know how much military might he had at his disposal. And after such a great victory in chapter 20, 
And after he had won all the battles, remember the giants, all the giants they beat up, oh my goodness, one giant after another. And then right after that, here comes Satan. And so you have to watch out when you, in, in victory, don't celebrate too long because your own pride can cause you, cause the enemy to come in and cause you to do something uh, on your own strength, on your own merit, and not trust in God, but trust in you. And so he was provoked, or he was moved. It was put into his mind, it was an impulse for him to move to number uh, the, uh, to, take, to take a census in other words Israel and then the second verse but David said to Joab and the rulers of the people go number Israel from Beersheba to Dan even to Dan and bring the number of them that them to me that I may know it he was curious. He demanded Joab. Joab was his soldier, a strong warrior. Uh, he commanded him to go and take the census. Joab tried to reason um, with him. And so he says, David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people. So not only Joab, but the captain, um, all of Israel, from Beer Sheba to Dan, is all, all to bring the result. And bring it back to me. Bring the word so that I may know. And that's what he wanted to know. He wanted to see it. And that the eyes king may see it. And a lot of times we want to see the Lord do something. Lord, if this is right, I want to see you. But the Bible lets us know we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And so uh, David, you can see here, he didn't ask the Lord. As soon as the Satan came, as soon as Satan came, he began to start reacting to what uh, was said. And he had Job go out. And so Job answered, uh, the Lord make his people a hundred times so many more they be. But my Lord the king, are they not all the Lord's servants? That's one of the questions. <laughs> so Joab tried to reason with him when he answered him. And he said, Lord, my Lord, add to your people. But don't all of them belong to the Lord? Aren't they all servants of God? He's the master of all things. And so he says, in there, he asked a question. Why doth why then doth my Lord require this thing? In other words, Joab is, you know, these are not easy questions. Why do you want to know this? What for? You gonna to talk to the king like that? I mean, everybody don't get a chance to have the king's ear like that. But Joab knew he did. He said, Well, you know, you need to. I need to understand why. Uh, which tells you we ought to question some of the leadership. And a lot of people say don't question God, but I'm of those who I do question God. I, I don't question God being God. I don't question God's will and his way. Sometimes I question God. God, um, Show me what that means. God, am I on the right track? Am I 
God, should I do these things? So those types of questions reveal your word to me. Can you reveal this word to me? And so those are the types of questions, but never, God, why you want me to do this? If God said do it, then I, you don't really question because there could be extra things tied into it. We walk by faith. And so why will he cause, be a cause of trespass to Israel? Now, here is uh, joy. Why should it be the occasion of guilt or uh, cause of sin? Why are you going to cause the people to sin, king? Joab knew it. Joab saw it. Sometimes when you have godly counsel, you ought to listen to godly counsel when they see things. Uh, but, verse 4, nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Job. In other words, Job, uh, not only Job, but his captain. Uh, so, the desire that Satan had so deeply rooted in David that he wasn't trying to hear Joab or the captains. He was bent on numbering um, as it gave occasion. And, uh, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. He was so provoked that uh, he wasn't, he didn't care about Satan's, uh, he didn't care about the well-being of the people or, or what would happen. He cared about what was stirring up in him and it was the enemy. And so that's why you need to know when the enemy is stirring up in you. Everything that stirs up in you is not of God. You know? And so you need to know the difference. God lets us know. He shows us by counsel. He shows us. You might not like to hear. Listen, a good Christian friend will tell you what you need to hear. And that's not always what you want to hear. But you need to hear it. And Joab was trying to be a good man of God to David. But David was the king and he was so bent on doing these things. They asked him, why will he be a cause to trespass Israel? Nevertheless, the word prevailed against Job, wherefore Job departed and went throughout all Israel came to Jerusalem. So he did what the king said. Um, certainly he wanted to do that. He didn't want to be caught not doing that. The king overruled him and enforced his order. And David went out, every part of Israel, and returned. left his presence and traveled all over Israel. And then it says all Israel and came to Jerusalem. Now this is a little further information to begin. One of the parallel passages of this is 2 Samuel 24. And uh, remember this is post exile after they had been exiled out of Babylon and those places. This is after that Chronicles was written. Before that, First and Second Samuel was written. That's why you have so many things saying the same thing because we have to remember one was before the uh, exile period and the other one was after more of a historical playback to what had happened. 
And, um, and so Job gave the sum of the number of people to David, and they, and all they of Israel, a thousand thousand and a hundred thousand men that drew sword. Um, sounds like a million to me. One point. Over a million men, a thousand thousand and a hundred thousand men that drew sword. It was four hundred three score and ten thousand men that drew sword. So we're looking at five one point five seven million who drew the sword. And Levi Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Joab. Now, uh, this didn't include Benjamin and the Levites. Because if you remember, they were there to take care of the temple. And the Levites were. And, uh, and so he did not mess with those people. Determination. Now Benjamin was determination to frustrate the king's um, intention. But uh, we know the Levites were not added because they were uh, the temple. They took care of the temple in Jerusalem. That was their role uh, as a people. Verse 7, and God, just like Job tried to tell him, God was displeased with this thing. He had committed wrong in the sight of God. God was displeased with what uh, David had done. In God's eyes concerning this matter, David, uh, God was not pleased with David. Was evil in the sight of God. And so he was displeased. Therefore, he smote Israel. Now, I didn't say he smote, uh, he struck down David, but he struck down Israel. He attacked him. He punished Israel. Y'all missed that, didn't you? You better watch out what you do and who you hang out with. Because uh, they might get by, you might not. And so it says in there that God punished, he smote Israel. After that, After God had uh, his wrath had come upon Israel and he had punished Israel, all of a sudden now David uh, said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. I've committed a great and terrible sin. God lets us know when we're sinning. He lets us know. In, in, in ways. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. But God does not leave it blank. He doesn't just leave you to your own devices when you sin. But now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant. In other words, I pray, take away the wrong. Pass over my fault, I beg you. Forgive me for my sin. You know, sometimes you can sin and even though God forgives you, the consequences stay. Mm -hmm. um, if you drink yourself into an ulcer, uh, 
uh, and now you say the ulcer, the ulcer is still there. And so David as said unto God, I have sinned. He let him know. But now I beseech thee, do away and do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Silly. I've been a fool. And so that's what was happening at this point. And uh, and the Lord spake unto uh, the Lord spake unto Gad, David's seer, saying, God didn't even speak to David. He he went to he went to Gad. Maybe he didn't want to talk to David. Gad, David Seer, gave him an answer to David's request. It came in the form of three ways. Verse 10, go tell David, saying, Thus said the Lord, I offer you three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. You got a choice of three things. That's what he told him. He said, you, I give you a choice of three things. Uh, one, either three years of famine, that's one, uh, you know, famine in the land, Or three months to be destroyed before thy foes while that the sword of the enemies overtake thee. Or else three days of the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coast of Israel. Now therefore advise thyself what word shall I bring again that sent me? <laughs> God sends you a word. He didn't, he didn't fluff it up. <laughs> he didn't, you know, he told me, listen, look, king, the king of kings said, here's your choices. You got choices. Mm -hmm. We have choices. Depending on how deep you are, you have choices, you know, you can Choose the wrath of God to be poured out upon yourself, or you can choose uh, salvation and accept the wrath that's already been poured out on Jesus Christ. But he said, I'll give you these three choices. So here's the king faced with three choices. God was going to impose upon him. Uh, he would, uh, three years of hunger, famine, famish, famish, uh, when there will be no food. Uh, three months to be destroyed by thy foes, to be consumed of war, when you go in the fight before your haters, during which your enemies will sweep you away and a sweeping defeat at the hand in the light of the presence of your enemy. Instead of a, your, a God preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemy, he's got God's wrath three years. Oh, sword, being in danger of the sword when the sword fall on you. Or three days of the sword of the Lord and even the pestilence in the land. <laughs> That's tough because you know 
Three years of fighting your enemy is no comparison to one day of trying to fight with God or, or him coming against you. It's almost like you'd rather take those other things rather than have to deal with God Almighty. Uh, but it's three days, an epidemic, a disease, a plague, pestilence, uh, terrible disease. And then, then the angel of the Lord during that time will bring disaster on all the territory, taking destruction through all the land, destroying the whole country. Exterminating forces of God Almighty. And he said, to determine now what you will reply. So God said, You got the choice, David. Consider what answer you'll return. And give thought to that answer. Think about it. And David said unto God, I am a great. In other words, I'm in terrible trouble. Amen. I'm in deep distress. Despite a desperate situation, it's difficult for me. It's a difficult choice. You might say, well, three days, that's not that long. But with the Lord, who has all power over heaven and earth, they already said he's going to have an angel come down and do some stuff to him. That's rough. If God could do it in one second, boom, the whole land is destroyed. People too. And uh, David said unto God, I'm in great strength. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord. I'd rather fall into the hand of God, the ever living, ever loving God. I'd rather fall into his hands. Because he's merciful. <laughs> mm -hmm. For he, for very great are his mercies. He's merciful. Extremely merciful. Rich in mercy. Ephesians uh, chapter 2, I believe it's verse 3, it says, but God rich in mercy. So he's rich in mercy. And David said, well, my enemies might not show me mercy. And the three years of war, and then the, the famine, the pestilence, the, the uh, three months, uh, you know, I can't really talk to anybody about that, but I can always talk to the Lord. Mercy. And so he said, but let me fall into the let me not fall into the hand of man. <laughs> I'd rather fall into the hand of God instead of the hand of man. So, verse 14, the Lord sent pestilence. He sent pestilence. Upon Israel and their fail of Israel, 70,000 men. 70,000 fell because of pestilence or disease. Um, they unleashed epidemic, plague, and terrible disease. And then God sent an angel into Jerusalem to destroy it. He sent his messenger, a divine messenger. Remember Satan started, he started listening, listening to Satan. Now he's listening to God, but it's, it's the God of judgment, the God of wrath. Here's your choices. God is still a God of ju judgment. He still sits on the throne on high, the judgment seat of God. And uh, 
God sent angels to Jerusalem, and as he was destroying, the Lord beheld. And this says, and it repented him of evil. And there's the mercy. And he said unto the angel that destroyed it, it is enough. Stay now thine hand. Listen. God does not repent. The wording is not correct. If God repented, that means that God would change his mind. And if God changes his mind, then how can he be completely holy God that changes his mind? He never changed his mind. He relented. He pulled back on the destruction because evidently they got the point. But God did what he did in full righteousness and holiness for what he did. Now, no, the but the word means to relent um, in, uh, what verse is that, um, 15. It says, uh, and he relented about the evil. And he said to the angel, the one destroying abundantly, uh, to stay your hand. That's enough. They've, 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 they've suffered enough. They've been punished enough. That's what God did. He just ended it. He stopped it. You can see that in the word. He stopped it right then. It's done. It's enough. He told the angel. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Or Ordan, the Jebusite. So he was standing um, uh, at the threshing floor. In other words, they've been crushed enough. When God crushes grapes enough, juice, the sweet juice comes out. And that's what a lot of times the crushing is all about. So that God's goodness can come out. He was standing uh, in the granary, the grain floor. Uh, that's where the angel was. And finally David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth having a drawn sword in his hand, stretched out over Jerusalem. <laughs> Woo! An angel, this angel of the Lord, David looked up, and uh, that's what he saw. David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between earth and heaven, that wasn't uh, I thank God for Jesus. Now, don't get it twisted. Having drawn a sword in one hand, stretched out over Jerusalem, and David and the elders of Israel were clothed in sackcloth and fell upon their faces. That's what happens when you worship God. Now, Christ stands between heaven and earth right now so that we can be able to connect, so that God can connect a holy God with a sinful man. But yet, if you don't choose Jesus, he's still got that sword out for you. That sword of wrath is still there. And so what David saw, boy, it must have scared him to death because it caused him and the elders to cover themselves and be clothed and wrapped in uh, the clothes that they would do when they were talking about uh, repenting themselves and fell on their faces. And David said unto God, Is it not that I commanded 
people be numbered? Even as it is, I have sinned and have done evil indeed. But as far as these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Lord my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not on the people that they should be plagued. So he took responsibility. David took responsibility for what he had done. He said, uh, Lord, I, I did this stuff. It's me who sinned. See, a lot of times we want to blame stuff on other people, but we have to look at, look at ourselves first. What part did you play? These sheep, he called them sheep. So he was their shepherd. He was their king, but he was still a shepherd. He said, these sheep didn't do anything. But what sheep do? What have they done? Let thy hand, I pray to you, O Lord my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not on the people, that they should be plagued. Then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David, David, that David should go to the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. And David went up, saying to Gad, which he spoke in the name of the Lord. And so now David is being very obedient um, to what the man of God is telling him, the Lord thy God has seen. And let me say this, be careful who you listen to uh, because there are some people out there who are claiming some strange things these days. Some strange and I mean, these are people who, groups, like large numbers, who believe certain things. And we have to believe, what does the word of God say? I always go back to the word of God. Always go back to the word of God. That's why we're going through scripture, so you can always go back to the word of God. When somebody says something, go to the word, take them to the word of God. And let them grapple with And on there and turned back, David went up, and David went up at the saying of Gad, and he spake in the name of the Lord. And on there and turned back, and saw the angel and his four sons with him, hid himself. Now Ornan was threshing wheat. So here he is, that's what David saw the angel, and David, Ornan looked and saw David, and he went out of the threshing floor and bowed himself before David with his face to the ground. And so Ornan, who was actually where this angel was, he might not have saw the angel, but he saw David, his king. And, uh, and then David said unto Ornan, grant me the place of this threshing floor that I should build an altar therefore, therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant me, it me, for the full price that the plague may be stayed from the people. The full price. I, I want to pay the full price. I know somebody else who paid the full price. He paid it all. David didn't want to cut corners. He said, I want to pay the full price so that I can build an altar to God. And Ornan said to David, take it to thee and let my lord, the king, do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for burnt offering and the threshing instruments for wood and the wheat for the meat offering that I give it all. The ordinary was ready to give the sacrifices to the Lord. Just give it. Because he knew who he was giving it to. 
He gave his all to the Lord. Ornan gave his all. That was his living. He earned a living that way. He gave his all. He offered his all to the Lord. I wonder how much of our all have we offered to the Lord? Just a question. Uh, and David, King David said unto Ornan, Nay, but I will barely buy it for full price. For I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer for an offering without cost. So David said, No, the price needs to be paid. The price needs to be paid. And David gave Ornan for the place 600 shekels of gold by weight. Evidently, that was a whole bunch of money. I mean, represented about the purchase price of $5,000 or more in today's, probably more in today's uh, cost analysis. And David built an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the Lord and he answered him from heaven by fire on the altar of burnt offering. And the Lord commanded the angel and he put up his sword again in his sheaves thereof. And so God was pleased now with the altar that David had built. God is now pleased because true repentance has happened. God stayed. He gave him a chance. And there's a time that God has given us to receive Christ. So you have a chance. That's the God I serve. At a time when David saw the Lord, the angel uh, answered him in the threshing floor for an end, the Jebusite. Then he sacrificed it for the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses made in the wilderness and the altar of burnt offering were at the season in the high place at Gibeon. So they were already sacrificing other sacrifices in other places. To the Lord. But David could not go before it to inquire of God. For he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of the Lord. There's a healthy fear of the Lord. David understands that now. That, uh, you know, I, I, Satan influenced his decision and it cost him and we have to be careful who we allow to influence our decision because if it's if it's the enemy if it's this world uh the things of this world they come to not they have no value in god's eternal kingdom they, they, they have no meaning uh, in god's uh you know in god's hand but those days where you worship God, and trust me, he was worshiping God by giving the altar, that was worshiping God. The burnt offering, the wheat offering, the meal offering, all those things, worshiping God by giving back to God a portion of what God has already given to you. David had way more than $5,000 to give. He had way more than those coins to give. But he did it. He paid full price because he wanted to build an altar, a place where he could call, this is where I worship God. There ought to be a place in your home where you worship God. That's where you and God do business. Nowhere else. Can't say, well, I do it while I'm cooking or while I'm doing the dishes or while I'm vacuuming. I just praise God. No, there ought to be a place where your Bible is and whatever it is, your prayer rug, where you get down on your knees and have a little talk. There ought to be a place in your house that's a sanctuary to God, an altar to God. A 
that's what you need. That's what has to happen. And then when group, when you unify like in the church, uh, we're just doing in a unified way what we ought to be doing individually in our home with our family. And so uh, we, we thank God uh, for this passage of scripture today. Uh, I wanted to go more into it, but I know it was 30 verses fighting death, but I think we have the gist of it. Thank God for his mercy. And so, tell somebody about the mercy of God. Tell somebody about the grace of God. Tell them that there's a sword of wrath waiting for you. Those who want to stand on their own wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and logic, and rationale. Or, you can trust your salvation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for allowing us to be here. Thank you for this 21st chapter of 1 Chronicles where David had allowed himself to be influenced by one of the most wicked and evil influencers who gets us inside of us and causes us to want to do things other than the way you would want us to do them. Forgive us, O oh God, and like David said, it is not it's not my mother nor my father, but it's me, oh Lord. And so, Lord, it's me who, uh, Lord, uh, he's asking for you to forgive me of my sins and, and forgive us for our sins that we might be filled again and renewed and revived in the Holy Spirit as you see fit. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And we give you all the praise and God, honor and glory. Bless those who are listening to Continue to grow in your word uh, as we go through the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. God bless you. Be safe. Um, don't forget this Sunday, we'll be doing communion. Get your crackers and your juice or whatever. And we're going to have communion together after our uh, sermon. God bless you.